I'm gonna do the cake. Yay! Hi everyone! Welcome to the Peju Winery Kitchen, right? I get to know all about, right? <laughs> Winemaker, fabulous Sarah Fowler. Hi. Fabulous Chef Nick. Hello, welcome. Fabulous, yeah, fabulous Lisa Peju. <laughs> we get to be your hosts. We do. Yes. And Chef right. gets to cook. Yes, that's so he's, right. I guess your host too. Oh yes. <laughs> Very yes. excited for us. We love it when Chef Nick. I know. On. This is the best thing ever. I know. Thank you. Excited to be here too with you girls. Me too. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm really excited about is the fact that we had two days of rain, like a little bit of rain, and then today feels like fall. It's yes, actually finally. amazing fall. It is. So it's a beautiful day too. Mm -hmm. Ready for Thanksgiving. I know. It's so beautiful out right now. I was taking pictures of the vineyards and the vines, uh, the leaves, nice. and it's so pretty. It's it so really beautiful. We don't get like a lot of change of colors no. on the West Coast, but if you are here in the Napa Valley or wine country in general, the grape leaves go through from the green and yellows and red. So yes. we get our own like fall foliage mm -hmm. colors. I mean, not like maybe they have on the East Coast, and I don't know because it's usually a harvest and I've never been able to be anywhere else but here for harvest, but I understand, right. I see pictures. And I think we got a little, we get a little bit. So, you know, oh, yeah. we should come visit. You can really see the four seasons. I yeah, know, yes. it's so. amazing. So we are here today because Chef's going to be show, giving us some tips yes. on um, how to prepare your Thanksgiving turkey. That's correct. And for yes. those of you that ordered the wines with the recipes, you have already the recipe, the turkey yeah. recipe in front of yes. you, but tips are good. So we'll get walk yeah. through guys just through the recipe and uh, if you have any questions, you know, that's a good time to ask. Yeah. But we're ask always here questions. anyways, but, uh, you know, so we'll go through the steps and give you some tips and hints so where you can absolutely uh, be successful <laughs> and then we are drinking my favorite turkey wine <laughs> right yeah right? This is perfect with, uh, with turkey. cheers mm -hmm. cheers cheers cheers. Right, cheers. <laughs> cheers cheers guys oh, there's a question we have our first question for me post harvest how much work is done in the vineyards and when does the work start again in the vineyards uh, a good question pete um so when is the work done Work's never done harvest in the work. Harvest, harvest, yeah, harvest work. work is so never harvest done. Harvest work <laughs> is definitely bring in the last bit of grapes, typically. And usually there's a little irrigation that happens. Um, and then we start moving into getting the vineyard ready for next season. So there'll be some compost coming in. Um, and then basically, like, the, the vineyard crew gets a little bit of a little reprieve, usually for about a month, six weeks. I mean, they're getting ready and doing or planning for 2021. But they get a little a well-deserved break for a couple of weeks and then they come back in and we'll start doing um it depends on what's going on but we're really trying to get like just the vineyard ready and prepped for um, the next season all the stuff we can kind of do right now the composting is probably like the number one thing that we are really focused on making ensuring that it gets out there before the first rains because we want the rains we're going to have them we just had a little bit come in and basically rain and get and basically what happens is that allows the compost to get really integrated into the vineyard. Um, and they re-energize the vines. Exactly. <laughs> so they're all the good nutrients are deep down. So when uh, when the vines are no longer dormant, they will start absorbing all the really good nutrients and start producing super delicious grapes so we can convert them into wine. Yeah, it'll be nicely integrated in the soil. Yes. Exactly. Always good. So we should talk wow. about this wine because we got oh. I think we gotta make sure, sure. we move things along. All right. So uh, sorry, I'm, That's okay. I'm, I'm being that person today. <laughs> you do that. So, good, yeah, because good. we're having turkey yeah, and Thanksgiving, our favorite at the Peju household. Moving, yeah, yeah. That's good. All our right. favorite wine at the Peju household is the Peju Province. And the province is a red and white blend. We serve it chilled. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that fun, a pretentious, super just easy drinking wine. So it you're is. not, most a lot of people drink Pinot, Pinot Noir. Or Chardonnay. Or Chardonnay. Yes. But they, and they also are but, really good wines for Thanksgiving. But right. the province is, it's a very, yeah. so meant so to go with food. Us. Um, it is, like Lisa said, it's a, it's a blend of barrel aged red wines with current vintage white wines blended together. Um, you're going to get a lot of the really good tannins and structure that you would get from a red, from the red wine, but you also get like that really bright, good acidity, freshness from the white wine blended together. It's got a little bit of residual sugar, which I think is why it holds up so well to one of the reasons why it holds up so well to Thanksgiving you know, yeah. meals and, and, the, and all the different dishes. Um, really good acidity in there. It's a little sweet, pretty, um, 
and it goes with lots of different foods. It is one of those, it's an Especially easy drinking, Especially Especially turkey. Turkey. Yes. really Especially. easy drinking, which is why we sometimes refer to it as a porch pounder, uh -huh. patio wine, mm -hmm. goat wine. Yeah. So it's wine. a really good summer yes. wine as well, but we drink it all through the holidays. Mm -hmm. But it really does go well with, yes, a lot of things like Christmas food. ham yes. as well. Also. Oh yeah. Salty goodness, yes. cranberries. But what's, yes, what's the best? Rusty squash, yeah. jam, stocking. Oh, exactly, but that's the thing. So, <laughs> you know, Thanksgiving mm -hmm. foods are so also different, I feel yeah. like. And so you need a wine that's slightly different to go with them. That's, that's, right, that's yes. how, I, how I pitch it to people. <laughs> but it really is a good, I mean, no, like, it's amazing. it really is a great wine for Thanksgiving. It is. It is. I agree. So tell us yes, about uh, some so, Thanksgiving uh, it's gonna, stuff. Guys, it's going to walk you through your recipe. If you have a very, if you don't, just, you know, when it's time for it, pull them out and uh, just walk you through the steps and just give you some hints and some uh, you know tips so you can make your turkey better so the process uh, always a star you know i like to brine my turkey mm -hmm. and this is this process is because it makes it a little more juicier mm -hmm. right uh it's, so the brine usually the ritual i use is about three quarters of the cup of kosher salt mm -hmm. to one gallon of water fresh mm -hmm. fresh water so it depending on how big is your turkey, if it's gonna need you know three or four gallons of water, so to kind of follow that ritual. So you wanna do kosher salt, fresh water, dissolve it very well. Very important to dissolve your salt very well, and so it's nice and brine, so the salt doesn't sinks. And everything is almost like sea water. And then the next step is to plunge your turkey. Make sure it's completely submerged, and this is for about at least twenty four hours. Twenty four hours. It's plenty of time to for the turkey to absorb that saline water. And then when you're ready the next day, when you are ready to roast it, pull them out, you know, make sure you pat it and dry well. So no water on it. In uh, my mom's case, she just leaves it right outside the back door overnight. Yes. It's cold just, because it's cold outside. Right. Now. Just make sure there are no so, cats around. Or, <laughs> but if you should cover it with something heavy. But yes, sure. Yes. But yes. Uh, yeah, you, you do can, have the feral cats. You can do that. Park. If it's cold enough and it's secure <laughs> in a place that you know is secure, <laughs> that's probably fine. Right? I put it in the cooler and throw it outside. There yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> but so then the next step, the next step once your turkey is brined and dried, send, send, uh, then you heat it up your oven to you know, I want to like 375, 400 degrees, depending what kind of oven you have. If you have a, a convention oven, maybe 375. If you don't, 400. And then uh, preheat it for about half an hour. Place your hot bird in a roasting pan, of course, for about an hour. And this is just to gain color all around. So golden brown, nice mm -hmm. golden brown color. Once you get that color, then you Get your oven loaded down a little bit, you know, like probably 225 will be a good. Okay. So the turkey continues to roast slowly. You don't want it to be, you know, 350 or 375 the whole time because it will almost kind of burn your skin before it gets down inside. Mm -hmm. So do 225 for an hour, 375, nice golden color, 225. And after that, use your basting butter, your air basting butter, which is Herb-basting butter. Ooh, yes. Fancy. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the recipe calls, I believe, <laughs> is for uh, it calls for rosemary, for sage, and thyme, garlic, and uh, I think it's half oil and half butter, and lots of chopped garlic. Uh, so that's gonna be basting. Once you throw it down to 225, so baste every 20 minutes, half an hour, so it roasts slowly, and the and the uh, garlic doesn't burn. Mm -hmm. So it's very important when you put a 375, don't, don't baste it yet because then your garlic, your herbs are going to burn. So once it's 225, then you can start basting mm -hmm. it. So your herbs is nice and fragrant. Right. And then you cook it until uh, it will, cook, depending on the size of the turkey, but it will be about another two and a half hours, you know, until 165 internal. So you are safe. In that. And always check it on your, in your tight and leg, between the tech, the tie and leg. That's where you want to check it because it's the, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the part of the bird that uh, that, that really cooks. You know, takes longer to oh, cook. Oh, got it. Good to right? know. Because we'll the breast it will cook faster than that. Of you course. You chicken the breast. Eh, it's ready. Guess what? Maybe the leg and thigh is gonna be a little wrong. Good to know. <laughs> Here we got a right? question. Question. Would you pair a different wine for a different type of turkey prep? Like, would you have a different wine for a fried turkey versus baked baked turkey? 
Yeah, a different wine, like for fried turkey, maybe we're looking for a wine that has a little more tannins, I will say, you know, so the, you know, kind of the greasy cuttiness from the uh, frying will cut into the tannins. I personally wine. drink our Peugeot Merlot with yeah, so that can be a, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a good choice. You can have all yeah. sorts of different wines. Yeah. 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 Open lots. It's Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. You, know, you deserve to like time to experiment. You know, it is time to experiment. And sure. it's nice. A lighter mm-hmm. wine in general goes better with like all the foods, but mm-hmm. you can have, yeah. 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 Like, you know, I, for, for me, I mean, we all like a little different, but I, if you got a, you know, fatty piece of meat, even stay or turkey, you might need a wine that might have a little higher tannins. So mm-hmm. just to label it out. But as you say, just have fun, you know, whatever wine you feel like drinking, it's all good, right? Yeah, yeah try them out. Sure. It's, it's the one right. opportunity where you don't feel guilty opening up lots of Absolutely. Wine. I'm with you on that. So let's have more sleep. We always, yeah, yeah. We yeah. always in our like, family, we always open all the big magnums that we have laying around. It's always fun. Yes. So mm-hmm. yeah, we, we nice have nice Do you put butter between the skin, Chef, or is it just the base? Uh, you don't. You don't have to really. Like butter you know, between you, the skin. Uh, do people do that. Yeah, yeah, some people do that. You know, they they do that, and it's it's fine. But uh, you know, if you do your brining, and then do the different temperature times: three seventy-five golden brown, lower it to two twenty-five, and then baste it with your butter and outside with your air butter. You really don't have to because the brine is already there, a lot of the work on it. Every time you open up the oven, you let the heat out. So it like almost extends the time a little bit. Well, you mean <laughs> if once it's cooked or? No, while well, you're going each time you go in and brine it every 20 minutes, right? Doesn't it cool down the, so it just extends the time that it cooks. Just yeah, a bit. it should be, you know, a quick base and all that. But, uh, oh, you know, it regularly takes about, let's see, 18 to 20 uh, pound turkey, about three and a half hours. Four max. I think you're just fast. You're and it fast. depends on your oven, you know. Because <laughs> he's standing there, like waiting. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, he's, but yeah, waiting. they're all, be like, oh, it's not they're so all good. sort of recipes after <laughs> or, or feelings. And, and, you know, feel free to do, you know. I mean, this is right. kind of like a normal, classy recipe for butter, garlic. Yeah. But, you know, you can yeah, do like, anything that you I'm want. I'm excited to sure. try. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yes. Jeff's going to. Um, so you're not demonstrating a turkey, but you're going to no. demonstrate oh. it. No, I'm going to demonstrate beef to you tenderloin. beef tenderloin. And uh, maybe you can use it on uh, Christmas champion. or New Year's Eve. <laughs> All right. Sarah's a champion. I didn't, see the, I didn't see the, the 2017 Peugeot Cabernet Franc, yes. which oh. is oh, one of our favorite varietals. Yes. Yeah, but it just the province is a pounder. Yes, a pounder, pounder. pounder, kitchen pounder. Maybe I'll take a seat. Oh, you're ready. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I did not Thank see you. No, that's drink the remaining so province of this glass. Oh, he pounded so it. Good, yeah. Well, I really the last sip. <laughs> so yeah, this is a great wine to go with, of course, beef tenderloin. Yes, so, yeah. um, of course. Mm-hmm. I talked about this. I did a call. I did a virtual tasting last night for a group of people, and this is the same wine. We did this mm-hmm. one as well. So and just excuse fun. me for a second. I'm gonna pull my. Yes, yeah, start doing your thing, and we'll talk about right. the wine. Mm-hmm. So let's. Wh- why is this your favorite wine, Sarah? Cab Franc. Well, because, so I think Cab Franc just in general one of my favorites, and, and I'm very very proud of the Cab Franc that we make here because I don't think everybody makes a really good Cab Franc, mm-hmm. and a lot of people treat the Cab Franc like it would be a Cabernet Sauvignon out in the vineyard. And we really have to do special, like more touch points. Um, I do a lot of thinning. There's a lot of like look, more, more um, focus and direction goes on Cab Franc simply because it's such a late varietal. And if you were to not do all those little extra, like those extra steps, the fruit when it comes in could potentially be more herbaceous. And Cab Franc in general has an herbaceous character, but I prefer it to be more on the savory herb side rather than the green herb side. And if we were, if we didn't do all those things, it would be more of the green herbaceous, which is fine. That's it's part of the style. And a lot of people like that, but because I like more savory and I think that we, as you now all like a focus and we all enjoy the savory characteristic of the Cab Franc. I bring Cab Franc to, if I go to a dinner party or get invited somewhere, I, I tend to grab a Cab Franc because I know that there's lots and lots of like really amazing cabs around here, but there's not a lot of amazing Cab Francs. Agree. And it's I also take this just, one out too a lot. It's delicious. I mean, it's just it's it's not everybody loves Cab Franc, and I and I understand and recognize that. But you should learn to love it if you don't. Right. <laughs> because it really is just interest. It's an interesting, very layered um, wine that has a lot going on. 
-hmm. So this one has, um, it's 85% Cab Franc. It has 15% Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a little blend. It's 100% Castate um, made with love. And I'm sure it's going to go really delicious with know, whatever you're going to do with that. The tannins are big on this wine. So. Yeah, it's a big, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's big, it's got some good spice. It is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, so should we go with this? Yes. Yeah. All right, guys, so what I have here is a portion beef tenderloin. And uh, it's already clean, you know, so I might not, we don't might have time to show the whole cleaning process, but I was going to show you. So this is called the chain, which is comes like this. And it usually comes on the other side like this, right? And this is called the head, which I already detached from it. Usually it comes like this. This is your beef tenderloin, how it comes, right? When you buy it, haul it on the uh, grocery store. So what you do is just with a uh, bony knife, which I don't have here, but it's a pointy knife where you can break it down and get your shade off. And then this is your head. Also, you need to detach it because if you want to roast it, you know, the head will be attached right here. And it this will be way thicker, right, than the rest of your tenderloin. So you want to detach it, right, and clean it well. And then you can, you know, roast it separate. I mean, the piece is separate in the same temperature saying no but separate pieces right so you get all the same temperature on the meat right so when you buy beef tenderloin say at mm -hmm. the grocery store does it always come unclean again you're uh, talking to a girl who well, does not cook meat so well <laughs> some, some, you know food. some some markets have butcher in the house so they if they i'm sure if you ask for it to be clean and ready to be raw, they will so I'd clean ask. it for you but if you <laughs> buy it in a you know a bigger store or like chain sources you might get it called unclean Right, but anyway, so this is what you look like it's already clean. So I'm gonna show you how to tie it up, right? So the chain is a little, you know, thin to do it. So this one you can save it and use it for maybe a big stroganoff or maybe tacos. A tacos. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So we have it here. Uh, I'm gonna tie it up. The easiest way to do, it, guys. I mean, you can roast it like this. You know, if you don't have the time or you feel like yeah, it's too much to tie it up. That's fine. You know, tighten it up. What, what it does is just get a more even cooking huh? and more, uh, what, what after it's cooked, you get straight cuts and slices of beef. So they're more round, more careful. Right, right. right? All right, but I'm gonna show you very quick. It's very easy. So uh, cut some of the pieces of string, right? Very easy. So put it like that in your table. Put a line on string like this. <laughs> right <laughs> so every about probably half inch and a half two inches right so like this like this Push your string so say a busher string that's right and then so once you got your busher string pieces already yeah so just go like that in the center and the tail so this is the tail you want to just a bump a little bit like that. So it's all about the same thickness. Start with your head. So this is the head here, uh -huh. right? So why why do we tie it? Uh, so I, I tie it because you know when when it cooks, it cooks uh, more uniform, and also well, that's and tie. also when when okay. when you slice it. So it's nice and more round looking shape kind of. Ah, but like you know, if you don't, if you wanna do this a step, it's still okay. You just roast it. Okay, or, uh, okay. good fine. to know though. I think right? I know an awful lot about yeah. cooking. And, right. And yet every single week, I think I, uh -huh. when we do this, I learn you something, something new. Cool little tidbit. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so okay. very simple, you see how I'm doing it. Just go like that and every couple inches, you don't want not I wouldn't there. Have, I wouldn't have tied it. Right. 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 I will tie it from now on. Yeah. yeah. I buy these and they're always clean. What are these extra pieces? <laughs> <laughs> you know. right. Mine don't come with extra pieces. <laughs> so I you, think it's when you go to a real butcher, right? They must give you the extra. Right. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you know, like it's, it's not yeah. difficult. It's just, you know, it's one extra step. But, uh, you know, at the end, if you, <laughs> you, you, you have more beautiful results on the meat. <laughs> well, we all want that. So. Yeah, right? absolutely. You see, it will take you, what, like, probably 10 minutes to do it. You know? It takes me about five, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it goes faster than right. yeah. any of us would be. 
to see. I would be and, calling a friend to help chair I'd be like, I can't do this. Can you please do this? <laughs> it reminds I don't me, know what to do. It reminds me like he's doing a corset. Like, he's like, that's what it reminds me of. Uh-huh. <laughs> She saw a girl wearing a corset today. Right. T-shirt and corset. <laughs> nice and tight. Uh-huh. So you keep the shape. That's exactly so the that's, same that's thing. A, that's it's, pretty much like the you know, Keep the shape of the beef. <laughs> so it is a corset for yeah. a tender one. It's a, right. beef, a beef corset? Uh-huh. A beef corset. Chef, uh-huh. do you like sear that. first or just go right into cooking? No, I'm going to sear first. Uh, the question was if I sear first before it goes into the oven. Yes, we will sear first. Okay. Yes. So now, see, I, it's already tight. What you do with the extra... Him, you see, you know, just take them out. So they don't catch fire. So why do you uh, sear first? I mean, I, I always sear first, but- What am I sear first? I know, for the- Yeah. For the juicy. Sorry. Yeah, because I, I, wanna, I wanna seal it and also <laughs> yes. searing what it does, you know, seals the meat and also it gives an extra flavor to the meat, you know, the more, caramel, extra flavor. more, more caramelization we all on, on, the, on the outside. Okay, so and why are you cutting off the little strings? Uh, I cut it out the, the end cuts know. because, uh, you know, you don't want it to interfere all over on the meat. Ah. So you want it to be as clean as possible when you sear it and when you roast it, right? Also good. And it's good, good to things. have extra, a little bit extra, so it's easier to tighten it out. You can always cut it like the way I'm doing it here. All right, so look it up, all right? Okay, nice beautiful. Dry, right? So now it's ready to sear, season it, sear, and now it. Okay. okay, fantastic. And this is the head. You can do the same, same thing that I did here and just put it together with the beef tender. Okay. We're going to skip this step so we can move quicker. Yes. All right. Very good. So we already got our steak here nice and tight. Yeah. So the next step is to season it, salt and black pepper. Uh-huh. Okay. So I'm gonna all around, all the side, because this is round, you don't wanna season just the top and not the bottom or the sides, mm-hmm. right? It should be all around. I love how chefs are so liberal with salt. Yeah, yeah. So, salt. so be yeah. generous because yeah. remember it's a thick picks of meat. So you, you want to be generous with, especially with the salt. So nice and salt here on the side and top and the sides, then go pepper. Okay, very important. Go on the sides. <laughs> then turn the back and do the same. Nice. Okay, very, very, very generous. Yeah. Very it's generous be here. Yeah, that's, you know, All there. around on the sides. Pepper. <laughs> All right. So at this point, uh, guys, uh, you can do, uh, if you don't have a big uh, uh, pan enough to, to sear it, you know, you, you can always cut it by half, you know, cut it by half and, and roast it to halves. Be, as long as it's raw when you cut it, it's no problem. You know, right. the problem becomes if you already sear and you want to cut it in half and it start maybe ble- bleeding or, mm-hmm. right? But in, in this case, you know, I have a flat pack here, which is a nice thing to have. Yeah. I wish I could have one at home, but if you don't, <laughs> you can always want, you know, pants sure. like this, you know, shallow pants, big enough, heat it up, oil, right. and do the same thing. I usually process. sear in my cast iron. Yeah, yeah. cast iron, yeah. Yeah. they work pretty good. Could you turn it? Could you like, just like turn it into like a U shape and, and sear it? You can do that too, yep. good point. You can do like that, and then once it's yeah. seared, Okay. Nice. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so we do here. I'm gonna do. Always try to use uh, no extra virgin olive oil to sear. I use canola oil. You know, canola oil, rice oil, or even just just a regular olive oil, but not extra virgin. Got it. You know, because extra virgins for you know once you heat it up, they kind of change flavors. Yeah, to it. and it burns quickly. Yeah. Right. So you see, nice, you can uh-huh. see the, the sizzling. So the same thing you hear here is you hear in your pan. Ooh, Keep okay. it out your pan, mm-hmm. your oil, and then sizzling. All right? Oh, it's going to be so perfect. I know. I can tell already. Now it's starting to smell. Wait, smell, smell like delicious meat? <laughs> I just wanted to say that. I'm hoping he has one already ready. That I do get to I do too. So make I sure do. you leave it uh, searing, you know, about a minute or so. Each side, so it's nice and golden brown. So you nice caramelize your top. Yeah. Your yeah. of the meat. Caramelizing is the key, I guess. Yes. Because 
we all, you know, meats. So meats have sugar on it. You got sugar in your meat. I got sugar in my meat. I, so I you, do? You, caramelize, <laughs> so you, you caramelize those sugars on the outside. Uh -huh. So it's nice and sweeter taste to it. Oh, I yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. I like it's all the juicy. That's a good yeah. pickup line. I yeah. like, hey, you got sugar in your meat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sugar on my meat too. All right, you can see on there, but yeah. beautiful. It's a nice and golden brown, dripping, right? No, based on what you said, don't cut it after you started searing because it drips. Yeah, so it's just, <laughs> but you know, you, you don't have enough pain, as Sarah said. Maybe you can just fold it around. Yeah, it's a great idea. Shape and then and shape it, but, but yeah. <laughs> and I'm uh, gonna you know, put it on this thing, guys. But always, you know, make sure you have a. A rack under your rusty pin. Yeah, I don't always. So you don't want it directly to the uh, metal here because it's gonna overcook the bottom, wow. the bottom of the meat because it's mm -hmm. directly into the metal here. Oh, okay. And in this way, the rack allows the the, the, the temperature, the heat to go through underneath and on oh, top all around. Okay. Yeah, Fancy. Very, very important. Good. I got a question over here. You got a question. Chef, when you're cooking at home, do you allow others to cook for you? Well, I allow them to like prep for me. <laughs> <laughs> and wash dishes, probably. Oh, that, yeah, for sure. But <laughs> no, but I, you know, most of the times, you know, I have like my kids, I have them help me, you know, peel this onion or oh, you know, showing them little yeah. things like that. And if, you know, I allow them to do a few little things, yeah, for sure. But mainly the important things, I always want to show them how to do it. So next time they know. <laughs> yes. He saw a TV chef put sugar on a tenderloin. What Ooh. are your thoughts about that? Sugar in the tenderloin? Uh, you know, it's something that uh, I, it depends what the chef really wants to accomplish. If, uh, you know, that chef wants to accomplish something that uh, should be sweet because certain reason, depending on how much sugar, you know, yeah, so that yeah, should be... Really. Not a problem as long as it's you know something with in mind to do it. But if you want to enjoy really the flavor of the meat, if you got a real nice piece of meat, you know, I won't put any sugar. I, I would just let it you know run as natural as possible right. to taste the flavors of the meat. Yes. Yeah, I like the salt and pepper almost ever. I mean, right. like, I feel like you season like it's, especially when that. you got a nice piece of meat, you know, right. nice quality piece of meat, you don't want to mess too much with it, you want to really taste what it is. Yes. And the meat's kind of like, meh, lots of seasoning. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, so it's here in all sides here. I got on my last side here. Oh, but while I'm forgetting something. Oh, no. So while this is happening, we're going to make it raw. <laughs> Very important. So we're going to start with our fennel seeds. I got a little martyr here. You can use that at home, or if you don't have that, maybe use a little blender or something. So I start with my fennel seeds because they are the hardest to grind. Right? Just kind of crush it, you know, crush it so the uh, the oils comes out and the, the aroma, right? Crush it like that. And then I got my uh, garlic here already Ooh. peeled. Yeah. All you're going to do with my knife is just uh, cut a little bit mm -hmm. so it's easier to pound it. So what, are you, what I'm looking here, here is almost... Almost a paste, kind of, a rough paste. Why wouldn't you just squish them? You know, take the knife uh, and flat and squish them first. The garlic? Yeah. You can do that too. Yeah. Does it change the flavor? I've always wanted to ask. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, on, not on this, not on this, because I'm kind of doing the same. I'm mashing it on inside. Uh -huh. So it won't change much. Yeah. He's yeah. just really good at it. Probably. Right. It's just a uh, speed up the process. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Right? So we got our fennel seeds, guys. Uh, second ingredient you put is your garlic here. Mash it well, right? Yeah. And then I guess our beef and the ready. You see? We could do that. So nice, you, right? you can yeah, see the help. color there, but look at this. Nice yeah. and golden brown, right? Yeah, it's like perfect. Yeah. Love and it. one important <laughs> thing here, everybody there, I don't want to put the marinade, the, the rub yet, because if I put the rub when it's raw and then I go and sear it, that might burn, you know, the, the, your herbs, your garlic might burn a little bit because it still needs to go to the oven. Yeah. 
right. right? So it's better to sear it the way we did it with just uh, salt, pepper, then do your wrap and then you wrap it nicely and finish it on the oven at low temperature. So that way you, you keep the uh, flavors of the uh, fennel, garlic, and the rosemary. Oh yeah, I forget that. <laughs> oh no. So we're gonna do a little bit of rosemary guys here. Thank you. Yeah, we always chef always you needs know, wine. We need wine for inspiration. Yes, yeah, especially it's like chef's birthday week. I know. Thank yeah. You. Thank it's chef's thank birthday guys. yesterday. Yeah. Oh, so we have to right. like you know give them as much love as <laughs> Just possible. Just keep celebrating. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Salud. 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 Feliz cumpleaños. Oh, gracias. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So we're here in the next uh, thing, the rosemary. Just a rough, roughly chop it, roughly chop it, and then put it in there in the marker here, right? <clears throat> so you're almost there. Yeah. It's rough. Really good. Yeah, it's rough chop. You don't want it too pasty. It's just like, mm -hmm. you know, it's just to get the, the oils, the aromas come out, right? And then next step is go the sea salt oil, like, to use sea like salt. A, yeah. Sea salt or maldon and salt? It looks like the it's a, it's a maldon, the brand is maldon, but it's yeah. just the sea salt. Right. Yeah. So nice. It's like a nice flaky one. Yeah, That's it my is. favorite I, for me. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, Very well so manageable. If you've not had it, you And then you, get your some. oil, this oil here, you can use nice oil, you know, extra virgin or nice olive oil, you can use it. You, know, you want that on the on the meat. Since it's going to cook a lot of temperature. Okay. So it's just fine. All right, lesson learned. Yeah. Hot temperature, canola. Low temperature, you can use nice flavor. Yeah, right. canola, peanut oil, or uh, just a regular olive oil, not virgin, but regular, that also would resist more heat to it. All right, a little bit of pepper. Hey. I like how he there gets kind of like, like there's like a music, <laughs> like a going on. So now we have our, our, our marinade here, guys. Uh -huh. We're going we're gonna to dump it here in this bowl, so it's easier for Maybe I can oh. show you there. See how it looks, right? I think it's like See? mortar. See, it's almost like a paste, nice, uh, you know, garlic, rosemary, right? Here you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was watching, sort of. <laughs> All right, so now that it, this is here, there's some rusting rock, you got your wrap here, then go ahead and massage the beef tenderloin, massage. right? Massage, yeah. You see all around nice and smooth. <laughs> All around here, you can see that. Turn around. Here. You know, this meat's getting go. a lot of love right Good now. Time. Kind of like the wine you make. It's a lot, it gets a lot of <laughs> love. Lots of love. And, <laughs> it's, and it's ready to go out of the oven right there. You see? Yay. Nice. All right. Perfect. Wow. Hopefully there's one in there. Now we go, <laughs> you know, probably 225, 250 for, it will take probably, depending on your oven, if it's a convention, it will take less. If it's regular oven, I would say 45 minutes to almost an hour. Okay. Right? So mm -hmm. goes to the oven. The oven. Yeah. Oh, the oven. Oven. Getting off, off, off camera. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And then guess what? Oh, voila. We do the magic, right? There you go. Oh, so this is what comes out, guys. You know, this is what it looks like. Beautiful. Hope you can see it well there in the camera. Mm -hmm. This little piece is the head that I was talking about you. So usually it comes attached here. So you don't want it to rust it like that. You don't want it, you want to rust separate. So everything cooks evenly. I almost right? thought you were going to like attach it to yeah, it and yeah. like tie it. I did too. No, it has to be Instead separate so it cooks evenly. Okay, and that's and then, interesting. I would have tried to tie it. Okay, so now <laughs> let's clean you know, all this here, nice. Okay, and we're ready to taste it. Oh. Yes, <laughs> it's ready to taste. This is probably the best yes. part. How yes. is sea salt different from regular salt, either texture or flavor profile? Yes, uh, uh, the question is how sea salt comparing to regular, let's say, kosher salt. Uh, yeah, it has to see, you know, the sea salt is more uh, briny and it depends where it comes from. Mm -hmm. But sea salt tends to be a little more <clears throat> briny, a little more salty. And also the texture is more manageable. You know, you, the grains are a little larger, the flakes. And there are all types of different sea salts up there. Uh, some are called fleur, fleur de sol, mm -hmm. which means the flower of the salt, oh. which is the first, you know, they do these big ponds. Uh -huh. And uh, the first 
salt that are rises to the top, that's called the fleur de salt, it's supposed to be the best. Uh -huh. And then, you know, another salt comes after that, mm -hmm. which, you know, have great use, but are not as you know, top of the line fleur de salt. But yeah, they're more briny, more really minerally than just a regular salt. So cool. you gotta, you know, maybe to use less or not. But I love sea salt. Mm -hmm. It's just this beautiful thing. It's all the nutrients, all the minerals right. there. Ooh, so we should we got a plate while we talk about this. Right. right. But the, the salts are like really interesting because they really because of the minerals. Right. The right. You have the red salts and the black salts, and depending on where they're from, mm -hmm. they really do have a certain flavor profile. Yes. So it's they fun do. if you have lots of different salts depending on what you're using them for. Right. Mm -hmm. I, so, yeah, yeah. Fun. All right, guys. So our so beating row is nice and rose here. So let's cut those strings, right? Right, because you don't want to eat that. You don't no, eat you don't. <laughs> Although sometimes <laughs> it happens. It happens, yeah. <laughs> my dog would eat those. <laughs> so you put it on the plate. Yeah. Oh my God, I forgot yeah. to take one out. <laughs> but, you know, stay your time. <laughs> Patience. You see? That's right, patience. Who, who has that? I know. <laughs> my, my, my tummy is like, mm, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Jeff, I haven't had lunch, you know, I'm really looking forward oh, to it. Me neither. Oh, I didn't have lunch either, but I have peanut butter pretzels. Oh, I don't have had So take all your streams out. <laughs> enough. A question kind of each of you can answer in your own respective industries. What's something that people were thinking 10 years ago in the wine industry that they might not be thinking today? Um, and we said for the wine industry in general, maybe in the valley tasting rooms, what were 10 years ago people doing that today doesn't work? And Chef for Oh, that is an intricate cooking? question right now. I'm like, mm -hmm. what um, were people doing 10 years ago? 10 years ago, so in the wine industry. Um, let's 10 years see. ago was 2010. <laughs> I would that. say like, well, I don't know, 10 years-ish. Yes. Square tanks yeah. were really popular. And like, I think there was like a trend, or maybe that was even longer, but like square tanks, yep. we've, we've kind of fallen away from those, maybe a little bit more, but there's always like, so yeah, different things. Your, like, what else? Um, well, I, I mean, on the business side of things, I mean, there was the 2008 market crash, which in 2010 really kind of hurt the wine industry just a little yeah. bit because we are always a little bit behind because we're always ahead, yeah. you know, because when you make wine, the year that you release it comes later. And then so that hurt us a little bit. That's true. We were trying to sell 2005 vintage in 2008, and then every year it got like slower and slower and slower. So yeah, 2010, that's bad. Yeah, I'm just gonna think of like plastic corks were still pretty popular. Oh, they were. And they're no as longer. Much. No, but like ten years ago, yeah. they were still like you wanted a pink one, you want a green one, you want a purple one. Right. People were like pushing the plastic corks, and thankfully that trend seems to be dissipating. Right, right. I think what else? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so what, what about from the, the world? from the food world? <laughs> It's like, uh, what, uh, you know, every other industry kind of has follow the same lines. It's just evolution, yeah. and everything is in evolution. But uh, you know, what I see in the last uh, 10 or 15, 20 years, you know, that uh, now is quite differently. Let's start with, you know, uh, we need to be careful more about allergies. You know, a lot of more people for yeah. some reason yeah, is getting true. more like allergy to gluten, allergy to onions, allergy to this. So that's or they're just that following a dietary yes, restriction. Yes, or just follow dietary restrictions. Right. So that's something that we as a chefs, as a cooks, we really need to be informed what those needs are for our guests. So we take care of them as much as possible. Right. You know, other, other things is just uh, also, uh, you know, the developing more of, I would say, uh, foods at home. You know, mm -hmm. it's getting more into that develop where you can get foods ready to cook. And I know that's this true. has been over time, mm -hmm. but now it's right. more into it. That's true. Right. And of course, you know, technology of cooking always changing. You know, you have all these new devices where you didn't have it before 10, 15 years yeah. ago. Yeah, sous vide. And, uh, yes, sous vide is, is one okay. example. <laughs> yes. Oh, and, uh, yeah, as, yeah like... you know, there are methods like sous vide that are probably you know, cooks, chefs, they've been doing it for a long time, but now those machines are new and more things that you can control, temperatures and and perfection your cooking methods. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, yes. in that note, I'm going to say that prepared foods, I'm just going to come to this kitchen and be like, chef, what do you have today? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do that too. <laughs> I will bring you wine. Yes. <laughs> Can you restate the temperature and how long you did the uh, tenderloin corn? Yes, uh, so the temperature, guys, uh, I did 225 because this is a convention oven. Mm -hmm. 
But if you add on that uh, just a regular oven, go, go to 250, then it will take about, you know, 45 minutes probably for convention, maybe an hour, an hour 10 for regular oven. Yeah. And uh, if you like medium rare, you know, always check it out. 125, you go medium, go to probably 122, uh, something like that. How yeah. can you tell if it's ready? Do you have if it's ready. Well, myself, you know, it takes some practice, but I, you know, sometimes I go by the touching. Mm -hmm. You know, I, if, you know, Isn't if, if like you a... go the, if you just squish it and say, well, oh, it's still, it's still, yeah, yeah, exactly. it goes it very like easy. Like... So that means it's too rare if you squish it very easily. If it has a little bit of resistance, might go medium red. If it has a medium resistance, then you kind of follow us. But, you know, now, nowadays they're all kind of thermometers. <laughs> As we're saying, what's different between, 15, 10 years ago, now you got those uh, electronic terminals. Oh yeah, so much that. easier. Yes. But yeah, you know, one of the things, go ahead and squish it. And if it's, if it's tight, oh my God, this is probably almost well done or medium well done. <laughs> right. But yeah, that's one of the but doesn't things. But does, does it continue cooking once you pull it out of the oven? It continues cooking, not much. You know, if you cook it at a low temperature, if you cook at a low temperature, maybe one or two degrees, if you could get a high temperature, let's say you could get a 350, 375, it will probably rise, you know, three to four degrees after you pull them out of the oven. So you want to watch that for it. Yeah. And you want to let it rest a little bit. Let it rest. And always, why? always your, your beef, your turkey, never cut it like in the next 10, 15 minutes, you know, be tender long, maybe 20 minutes at least. Turkey, I will say at least 30, 30 minutes, half an hour before you carve it. So your uses, all your effort that you put on it by brining it, by, you know, roasting it slowly, don't go out and like, oh my God, I cut it too soon. Yeah, because it will happen. You know, you cut it too soon, all your uses will start coming out. Mm -hmm. So you want to preserve it there. Be patient. And let's cut it. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Get to do your potatoes yes. and all the other good So ones. let's see, guys. Let's see it through here. <laughs> so this is um, about... What? <laughs> Let's cut it this side here. Kind of like I would say medium, medium. almost. Medium. Yeah, medium. Yeah. yeah. Medium. Mm -hmm. okay. But it's still <laughs> like nice. It's still nice and juicy. As you can I see, like still medium. tender, yeah. right? I'll eat it. I'm gonna <laughs> try it. You see? Yeah. See, nice. It's still same, nice in color. Mm -hmm. All the way pink, but that's that's because of the uh, the low temperature. You know, if I have it roasted. A higher temperature, then it will be like very dry on the edges, yeah. but maybe a little pink on the center, right? Uh -huh. and, it looks beautiful. Thank you. And what I got here is, uh, guys, you can accompany it with everything that you like, but this I got called, this is called Salsa Verde, which is an Italian salsa, almost like herbaceous kind of, so kind of go with the wine here. I well, what's think. in it? So what is in it is oregano, thyme, garlic, shallots, capers, Ooh. and extra virgin olive oil, salt, and pepper. So it's, yeah. it's almost like a pesto, but I make with herbs and yeah, no, capers. It sounds shallots. amazing. Yes. So you, it's a little pungent, not too much, just a little pungency to it, right? We'll let you know. So and this is very easy to make. You can do maybe one, two days ahead, so you don't have to deal with the same day doing it. Right. It's always good. So, a yeah. little bit, yeah. smear all over. Like I need always got to smear, smear have to plate it properly. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh. All right. So, let's smear. see. You should try he did. it. He did. He got more smear. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. And looks, I mean, this will go great with any of these bigger reds. Yes, Cabernet Franc, it will. Cabernet Sauvignon, mm -hmm. and Merlot. Of course. Any of those. Mm -hmm. Like so anything, we have to try. taste our wine. Yep. Taste our wine first. Mike's so excited. <laughs> and then we do our pairing. Wait, I have my schmear. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm all <laughs> salsa verde. Mm -hmm. Salsa verde. Mm -hmm. mm. We're gone. Oh. See how mm. tender it is? Mm -hmm. It's very tender. Mm. Even if it always uh, almost mm. went to medium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then taste the wine. Mm -hmm. So you taste mm -hmm. the bite of food, then you taste the wine again. That's really good. Mm. And I'm, it made I, the I wine taste even better than it already tastes. Wine. Sorry, chef. I'm not on top of my wine oh, pouring skills. Okay. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, so, that's what's going on. I know. Okay, well, since you're pouring, I will do that. 
So we are gonna nice. eat our beef tenderloin mm -hmm. after oh, yes. we um, sign off. So thank you for joining us. Um, we look forward to seeing you again. We will yes. probably continue these back starting in December again. We will be taking a week off because next week, next Thursday is Thanksgiving. That's so right. it's a holiday. Yes. Everybody will be sleeping in their houses <laughs> and not, and still social distancing yes. is the plan or outdoor Thanksgivings. Yes. That's what I hear. It's happening. Outdoor. Except if you live in the snow, probably really hard <laughs> to do that. And, um, so yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Hopefully you guys got some the you know tips for your holidays. How to you know do a turkey or a beef tenderloin. You know we always here. You know, for both, out. right? Shoot us an email. I'm here. And then so, it's not too late so to order you. your Thanksgiving wine yes. because that <laughs> holidays. Oh, oh. And the, the bubbles have shown up. <laughs> well, we want. We are thankful that you guys showed up. Yes. Yes. Thankful thank you for, for lots of gratitude oh, for like having coming here. There's a few of you that I know that. Have been coming on on a regular basis so we have lots of gratitude and are very very thankful we want everyone to have an amazing uh, holiday yes. be safe do yeah and you can on. have thanksgiving you can have like turkey and this is really an honor of chef but you know we're signing off anyway but <laughs> we do have a new release and i'm so proud of this this nice. is like one of my most favorite that, that's not it's okay. Well, she's pointing fast. That's okay. I am. I'm trying it's to be a fast. Blanc de Blanc. It's a Blanc de Noir. Sorry. We're very excited. Um, it's 100% from our estate. It was on Tourage for three and a half years. This is like one of those like special little things that mm -hmm. I get to do once in a while, like a super selfish project. I'm so thankful. And it releases like soon, like maybe even Fantastic. this weekend. I don't know. Soon. But this is really to say happy so, birthday to Chef. Hey, 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 thank you. Thank you. And Sarah, thank you for making wine. Cheers. Thank you. You guys cheers. Have a great what holiday. What a nice way to end here. Yeah. Cheers, thank you guys. Thank you guys cheers. for joining us. Have a great holidays. Yes. Thank you.